Why can't the church be the leader in its community? Why can't the church be the best in health, in looking after children? The church can do it and should do it better than the rest of the community. Hi, I'm Baron Gilfillan and I'm an American television producer and I'm also the founder of the world's largest video Bible school called the ISOM. I recently took my film crew to Australia to examine a group called Kingdom Investors, headed by Dave Hodgson. Dave's organization is of great interest around the world because it is having a significant impact on the business culture of Australia. We are looking at one of Dave's strategic business partners based in Tasmania, the man's name is John Dingemanser, and he heads up a leading architectural and engineering corporation called CBM Sustainability Group. The goal of CBM is to initiate and develop sustainable projects that benefit not only the investors, but also the community and the environment. In addition, John is a committed Christian believer, and he intentionally uses his company's influence to help local churches to build the kingdom of God. John uses his company's cutting edge expertise to bring new concepts into church facility construction and community engagement. Many are calling this the re-envisioning of the local church. Others simply call it future church. Okay, well, let me take you back to mid-1999. We're approaching the new millennium. I, I went up into the mountains on my own and I sought the Lord. And, and I really sensed the Lord saying to me, I will show you my new way of being the church. The fact is that more than 90% of the population regards church as irrelevant, not effective, not um, something that they want to be part of. And so when I got that word from the Lord, it was, okay, how do we fix this? What can we do about that? We needed to get the, the business people, professionals engaged in church, and we needed the church to be much more fully engaged in the broader community. And so in seeking the Lord about that, we trialed a number of different things. And uh, my background is that I'm a, uh, in construction and property development. Uh, I'm also an architectural designer, uh, building designer. Uh, and so using those skills, we started to uh, see God lead us to opportunity. And one of those opportunities first started in my hometown when a large building, which was a factory, an old wool factory, came up for sale. And so I grabbed my pastor and I said, wow, what couldn't we do in this facility? And I painted a picture of, and a vision for what could happen on that site, where we would build markets, we would build, introduce business, we would really connect with our community. We developed that facility into a large thousand seat auditorium for the church. And that took up about a third of the site. The balance of the site, uh, we introduce businesses, we lease out space to businesses, uh, storage facilities and so on. And now there's around a million dollars of income every year coming from the business components into that facility. So after that, uh, that experience with the Door of Hope Church, my home church, where we developed this concept, it really started to define itself when I received a phone call a few years ago from my good friend, Pastor Ian Zerner, who's based in New South Wales, and he's the senior pastor of Coast Life Church. And I couldn't believe what had just taken place and the reason for that call. It was a Saturday afternoon on the 9th of October, 2010. I received a phone call from one of our church members and said, Pastor, our church is on fire. I said, absolutely our church we're a church on fire and he says no the church is on fire and uh, so i came straight around and uh, discovered that the church in an afternoon just burnt to the ground we had 13 fire trucks uh, containing the fire we had 2,000 people gathered to watch it burn you have probably heard it said if you want to gather a crowd just get on fire for jesus well we have proven that to be true and we had a couple thousand people watching it burn we had police there was confusion and it was mayhem we had helicopters news helicopters overhead 
But in the midst of the chaos, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, Ian, you're going to build bigger, better, and stronger. And so with that, I just reached into my pocket and I pulled out my, my phone and I called my good friend John. I said, John, who lives in Tasmania, I said, you need to get up here. The church is burning and uh, bring your, your, your drawing board with you because we've got to do this again and we've got to do it bigger, better and stronger. And so that was the defining moment for us where we began what we call now the impact journey. There are three core values at impact and that is to belong, believe and become. And we wanted to create an environment where people can come from the community with a great sense of belonging, where there is no judgment, where there's unconditional, unconditional acceptance. And out of that belonging, uh, by the grace of God, that we engage in their lives and in conversations to take them on the journey to believe so they can become everything that God has called them to become. So when we relaunched two years later, we opened five business enterprises. And those enterprises were there to love, to serve, to engage with our community. So we had a children's play center that's open six days a week. And the first year we had over 11,000 families from the community come and enjoy our children's indoor play center. Uh, we opened a gym. Uh, which grew exponentially and today we have almost 3,000 members and a tremendous amount of connection with the community through our gym. Uh, we have uh, two cafes on site where we offer uh, catering and meals for our community uh, along with doing events and hospitality and we do have a medical centre as well here in our Erina Centre. And I believe that God's always intended the church to be the centre or the focal point of the community. We've given over to the shopping centers, to the sporting clubs and other community endeavors, but it's in God's heart that the church would be front and center. The very heartbeat of the community is there in the church. And that's what Impact's all about, is bringing community engagement through the church into everyday lives. Now, I believe that the message never changes, but the methods of communication do change. And I believe our impact model is very much on the heart of God of how we can engage and transform our communities. And I think as we move forward, I think every thinking church needs to be asking themselves, how can we better serve, love and bless our communities? So all of these businesses uh, were built with a community connection or community engagement that we can just build relationships. And now what's happened is that we're seeing the fruit of it, that literally every weekend, we're seeing people come into our weekend services that have previously had no interest or understanding in church life. But through the process of belonging, believing and becoming, we're finding people find faith in Christ and we're just reaching to totally unchurched Australians and see them come on a journey of faith and relationship with Jesus. Impact Centre or as I mentioned, is the benchmark, but it's not an isolated case. Let me talk to you about Pastor Paul Geeling from IC Church in Brisbane. We were handed a church with a $4.2 million debt, a dwindling congregation in a country that has a 7% church attendance rate of the whole population. It was a huge challenge, but God began to give us a strategy and a plan that was outside the box that progressed this vision forward. We want to have a facility here in the western suburbs of Brisbane that is attractive to the community, that people are coming across this property, thousands of people during the week. And so then we started dreaming into that. We want a cafe, we want an indoor children's playground. We want to have a conference centre for the western suburbs that's A grade, that schools can do their end of year celebrations and their graduation services. So we started dreaming into that and then sharing that with the church. And the church has run with it. They're very, very excited about that vision for the future, that it would not just be a church for them on Sunday. We'd lock the doors after the service and see you next Sunday, that the church venue 24 seven is gonna be used for people access. It's not either or. God says it's both. He wants to build the Christian community strong, but not keep it behind the four walls of the church, but that we'd engage out with. And so my first thing would be to pastors, well, look around your community and look for the needs. 
it could be in senior citizens, it could be a regional or country area that's got a certain lacking of facilities, it could be in a bigger city where the suburbs are growing but the infrastructure is not kept up with the city's growth. And you could build something in your church community that facilitates a secular community need but then opens up doors for spiritual engagement and connection to the church. There is opportunity all around. Look in your congregation to who you've got because they're connected to opportunities. Uh, it could be a sporting club, it could be a childcare facility, it could be a shopping centre, it could be anything that has a need and you serve and God will give you the opportunity to speak. The body of Christ is far more robust than we think and our churches are stronger than we think. My, my heart is that every city, every suburb, every community should have a thriving church in the center. The church should be the center of influence in the community. The mayor of your city should come to you as pastors and seek your advice on problems within the city. Why can't the church be the leader in its community? Why isn't the church central in each suburb, in each city, in each regional area? Why can't the church be the best in health, in looking after children, in all kinds of enterprise activities? The church can do it and should do it better than the rest of the community. So you've heard examples, you've seen uh, some of the things that are, we're doing in terms of future church. And I'm sure you're asking the question, what about me? I know many pastors are stuck. Their church congregations are stuck. They're shrinking. They don't have the resources. They don't know how to create facilities that engage with their community. Pastor Ian Zerner and Pastor Paul Gilling have been in that similar situation. Can I encourage you to seek the Lord? It requires faith, it requires courage, but where there's vision, the Lord will bring provision. There are people in your church that can help you. There are other pastors, other churches that have begun this journey. This can happen for you as well. So can I encourage you, don't be stuck where you're at. The Lord has greater things for you. The Lord has greater things for the church all across this world. And this model, Future Church, is growing the kingdom across the world. And I encourage you to be part of this. Mm -hmm.